Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to check out the PTS patch notes for the Blackwood chapter. Make sure to go check out ezo-hub.com down here in the Blackwood overview page. We will have all the things related to the Blackwood chapter listed up once we get access to the PTS. The PTS right now is still down, but by the time you're watching the video, it might be up. And I will do a lot of follow-up videos on things like champion points, the companions, and so on. I will have videos for each of the new things, and also balance changes, and so on. And keep in mind, this is the public test server, so things might still change. So let's see what they have for us. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Welcome to the Elder Scrolls Online v7 and our next chapter blackwood okay roleplay texture we're also excited to introduce companions to fight alongside you keep your company and tell new stories as you grow your friendship so i'm actually looking forward to this the companions seem to be decent but i could test them a little bit on the previous server but that was a very early build so i'm actually looking forward on doing an in-depth video on this year now that we have access to the PTS server. <clears throat> or gather your strongest allies to take on the rock grove, yeah, the trial and new item sets, antiquities, collectibles, outfits and more. Okay. So kinda business as usual. Update 30, which is a free update as part of the base game. Includes several other additions and features as well, including ability bar timers. Okay. That's actually gonna be juicy. That means that the console players will basically have action duration reminder, I guess. It's gonna be, I will do a video on this one. I don't know how it exactly looks, but I hope it will be similar. This would be great help for rotations. Bankable outfit style pages, thank god. <laughs> New monster masks, master request assistance. Uh, this probably is the Imperial City monster mask they are referring to. Yeah. Adjustments to proc sets and the new champion system. Okay. Also included is the new Endeavors system, allowing you to earn a new currency that can be used to purchase items directly from the crown crates. A lot of people have been saying this is like a response to Microsoft buying sauce. Could be true. I don't know. They have copied the PCNA characters. Sure. Okay, cool, cool. Let's scroll down. So like always, the new zone. The new tutorial. I will probably do a video on this too. There... There's a cool thing at the end of the tutorial, you get into a gallery, so you can actually choose where to go, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so like always, new story, new zone, public dungeons, world bosses, and so on. Oblivion portals. We'll do a video on this one too. I played one of them and it was actually pretty cool. They were fairly long, I was surprised at how long they were. But cool stuff, prefer them over the older world events. Yeah. And they will also randomly spawn throughout Blackwood. Probably like, like the other world events. Companions. So, companions are non player characters who can aid you on your adventures throughout Tamriel. Once called to your side, these stalwart allies will assist you both in and out of combat, fighting alongside your companion and taking actions. They approve or will improve their effectiveness and allow you to build rapport, respectively. As you earn their trust and strengthen your bond of fellowship, your companion may share personal quests with you. You may also give them companion-specific gear and customize them in a wide variety of ways, including setting their abilities, mounts, costumes, outfits, and more. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I will do a deep dive on that stuff. Please keep in mind... On the website, we will have companion guides on alcashq.com. And the whole system will also be on Ezo Hub, showcasing all the possible skills and so on. 
Acquisition and activation. If you have access to the Blackwood chapter, you can unlock two companions throughout completing. Yeah. So for now, there will be two Bastion and Miri. This will they will probably add more over time. Maybe every chapter, one or two new ones, or maybe in Q4 DLC we will get another companion, and so on. Once. Either of chef is completed, the respective companion collectible will be granted. Okay, cool. These collectibles can be found in the collections menu under a new top collectibles category of allies. In the companion subcategory. <laughs> They're really stuffing the collections menu full. Assistants are considered allies and have been moved to the their own subcategory. Okay. You may have either a companion or an assistant active. Okay, so you can't have both, I see. Companion collectibles may be activated from the collections menu, sure. Or quick slotted, okay, that's nice. Limitations in population limited instances such as dungeons, group arenas, and trials, each companion presents counts toward the population cap, yeah. So basically, if you're in a 12 player trial and you have 10 players and two companions, you're maxed out. Players will always take priority and companions will be auto dismissed as players sewn in. Okay. It's gonna be interesting to see if that actually <laughs> if it actually works. Companions cannot be summoned in PvP areas, soul arenas, or in housing inst Oh wait what? Huh, interesting. You can place them in your house, maybe that's why. Yeah, okay. So maybe you will be able to move them around and so on, but yeah, okay. They also cannot be summoned while you're in combat or if the summoning character has not yet completed the quest. Okay. If the relationship between the character and companion deter deteriorates into very low rapport states, the companion may voluntarily unsummon themselves. Oh, what? Okay. Interesting. So you gotta keep them happy. There will probably be a very easy trick that you can just pamp up like the goodwill number onto max. We will see how that goes. Companion visibility may also be briefly suppressed in some situations where they are unable to navigate to your character, such as while swimming. Yeah, okay. To engage with your companion, simply initiate dialogue with them and select the companion menu. Okay. This menu provides you with detailed information regarding the status of the companion as well as tools for adjusting the companion's combat behavior. Yeah. So basically you can summon the companion and then there is a you can talk to them and you will get into a separate menu. Beyond the companion menu, dialogue with your companion is also a way to get to know them better and their responses will vary based on report, quest status, and other fact factors. So pretty much like everything you need to know will be in that menu. Level, abilities, the report, perk details, and so outfit, and so on. Combat. Selecting the equipment option of the companion character tab displays any companion equipment in your inventory which can be equipped on your companion via the display on the left. Skill stuff. The abilities may have usage restrictions such as requiring a specific weapon type is equipped. Yeah. So if you want them to play a two-hander build, you gotta give them a two-hander obviously and so on. Companion abilities utilize a cooldown system to determine frequency of usage with, with various companion abilities having an array of cooldown time. There's a lot of companion abilities, that is very true. There is also abilities where you can like, okay, if, your health, if the companion's health drops to like 50%, he will like go into stealth mode or something, so it deaggroes the mobs and so on. But in the end, I guess letting them play in range mode will be the easiest way to avoid death cosmetics companions can be customized using many of your own cosmetic collectibles this includes mounts costumes and outfits <clears throat> companions have a default mount which they will utilize when you mount up but this can be overridden yeah so you can 
basically give them whatever amount you prefer. That is pretty cool. Basically, an outfit, outfit station allows you to configure a dedicated outfit slot. If each companion having a dedicated slot per account. Yeah, nice. Note that the companion's head armor is automatically hidden at all times and will not be displayed regardless of equipment. Okay. Additionally, a small subset of mount costume and outfit collectibles may not be usable by the companion based on gender, race, or other restrictions. Yeah, that makes sense. Progression. So this is gonna actually wander. With the exception of quest and rapport, which collectively represents the relationship between the character companion, all companion progress is account wide. So you gotta unlock the companion on each character, the quest, I guess the introduction quest, but then the progress is account wide. That is interesting and a little bit confusing, but okay, sure. Companions are level 1 when unlocked with a limited set of ability bar slots and a maximum potential level of 20. So there's like a separate XP for companions, so they, won't, they, they will not steal your XP. Experience increasing effects such as, okay, as holiday bonuses and consumable boosters applied to your character will provide an indirect benefit. Oh, interesting. Okay, nice. Didn't expect that. Okay, yeah, it's that stuff scales. More abilities, ability bar slots unlock and more class abilities become available. Yeah, this is cool. This includes an ultimate slot and ability which unlocks at combat level 20. Yeah. So they have really unique abilities, which is pretty cool. And an ultimate that can also boost damage like crazy. I will showcase all of these in a separate video. Don't worry. Skill lines. Companions have access to several skill lines, each with associated abilities. Most companion skill lines have free active abilities, which can be acquired through leveling up of that skill line. Yeah. Class skill lines increase with the combat level of the companion. Weapon skill lines increase through combat experience based on the equipped weapon. So if you want them to level up the two-hander stuff, they need to play with the two-hander. Yeah, okay. Armor skill lines increase through combat experience based on the equipment. Yeah, so it's basically pretty much the same thing as the player itself. Racial skill lines do not include active abilities and are immediately applied based on the race of the companion. Okay, cool. So this rapport stuff. Rapport with companions begins at Cordial, based on the introductory quest experience and may go up and down over time, based on your actions with the active companion. All companions have strong personal preferences, which you can learn about through dialogue and experimentation in the world. As Rapport increases or falls, various thresholds will be met, with corresponding changes in the companion's dialogue with you. At higher tiers of rapport, the companion will be inclined to share personal information with you and ask you for your assistance with us. Okay. So if the companion really likes you, you will unlock additional special quests. That is cool. And at lower tier of rapport, they will pretty much hate you and just AF. <laughs> You're about to engage in the combat and the companion is like, haha, I'm gone, bye. That would be funny. Rapport adjustments are displayed in real time in the loot stream and have limitations on how often they can be triggered. Okay. So it's like Miri is kind of like a stealthy character. I guess she will be happy if you steal stuff or like open up treasure chests and so on. Bastion is m maybe more of a guy that... It's better you try to be like a good person, so killing people might have a negative effect, and so on. I really hope there will be a, like in the future, there will be a very mean companion that will be happy when you actually kill play like people. That would be funny. The current rapport status can always be viewed. Yeah, sure. Equipment and sourcing. 
Companion equipment is distinct from player gear with no overlap between them. Companion gear unlocks with a set of untrained white equipment based on their background. Bastion begins wearing medium armor and a destruction stuff while wha, wha, Okay, sure. While Miri starts off with light armor and a bow. Like Bastion do uh, they portrayed him as a sword and board, more of a tanky guy, so I don't understand why he doesn't have like heavy armor and sword and board and Miri is like the stealthy character. So she should have medium armor with a bow or like daggers. But anyway, it is what it is. Companion equipment does not include level, cannot be enchanted, does not require repairs, and does not include an inherent style appearance. Yeah. White companion equipment can, per can be purchased from weaponsmith, woodworker, armor, leather worker, and tailor merchants throughout the world. So there will be green, blue, purple quality companion equipment with traits are obtained from monster drops throughout the world, particularly from bosses. So you gotta farm bosses to get traits, sure. So what are the traits? So they create a complete new trait that they will have to balance in addition to the other traits. But I guess they're from the companion, so not that big of a deal. Quickened cooldown reduction, prolific ultimate generation, focused critical strike chance, shattering penetration, aggressive damage done. Also, you get damage done modif- damn, that's actually nice. Soothing, healing done, augmented ability buff and debuff duration, bolstered, reduce damage taken and vigorous max health. So if you want a healer, you- probably won't augment it because the ability duration like the heals will last longer or like soothing for healing done you want them to be a dps aggressive will be nice and maybe for a tank more max health or damage reduction there's also ulti generation yeah okay they're nice i like them we will have to see how much percentage wise they have it's gonna be interesting to play around with companions This will be actually very interesting because usually just working on the builds, it's always the same. I mean, sure, the builds change, but it's always the same stuff. So having companions, that is actually complete new mechanic in the game is actually going to be great. Quests and rewards. In addition to the Blackwood quest objective, which introduces and unlocks the respective companions, each companion has two associated personal side quests which will become available to you once a sufficient rapport has been established. Completing the second companion quest will unlock a house guest collectible of the companion, allowing them to be placed and utilized similar to other house guests. Okay, that is actually cool. I was really surprised when I actually placed my first house guest in my room. It works fairly flawless, even though there was like ups and downs and I had my go shrine next, it was super. I was surprised it worked that well. Completing any companion side quest will result in a large, large rapport boost. I still wish we could place our own characters in our home. That would be sick. Perks and keepsake, keepsakes. Each companion has a unique associated non-combat perk, which benefits you while active. Oh, interesting. Miri's expertise, treasure chests found throughout treasure maps and in the overland have a 30% chance to provide additional loot from hidden compartments. The treasure from these hidden compartments may contain additional gold, sellables, or recipes. Okay, cool. Bastion, Bastion's insight, potions looted from chests and monsters have a 30% chance to be improved by Bastion's insight. <laughs> You proved how. But okay. By completing meta achievements associate, associated with each companion, you can unlock a keepsake collectible for each companion, which provides the benefit of the non combat perk, even while the companion isn't active. Damn. Nice. The collectibles are located under the upgrade section of the collections menu. I didn't know about that. That is actually cool. 
Man, there's so many new assistants implemented with these companions. Responsiveness and Michelin's. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce that stuff correctly. This is also an English lesson for me at the same time. <laughs> anyway, companions can respond to a wide array of situations that occur while adventuring with you, both in and out of combat. While they will always respond to some critical triggers, you can adjust the frequency your companion will vocally respond by opening the settings menu. Okay, that is cool. Because I don't want every time I open a door, them to actually tell their life story. That's great. Beyond ability and equipment selection, companions can also be direct directed in battle in a couple additional ways. While companions will always attempt to engage in combat to so support you, utilizing pet commands allows you to direct the companion to engage with specific targets or to pull back. Okay. By default, holding Y and left or right, clicking on the mouse and keyboard or pressing L3, R3, along with the left or right bumper on gamepad. Yeah. Additionally, companions will utilize their ultimate when available and conditions are met by default. However, you can choose to have them wait until directed to utilize. Companion ultimate auto cast setting and gameplay sections of the settings menu allows you to set the companions to wait until they are directed to use their ultimate. By clicking on the new ultimate icon, which is present next to your hotkey bar. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So you can basically time the companion's ultimate with yours if you really want to. Cool. Now this was to my surprise. Companions will also attempt to block incoming heavy attacks, interrupt some abilities and break free from crowd control effects. However, the timing is not always perfect and they do have a cooldown. I was really surprised how well this worked. Like these companions, they were actually decent in combat. If a companion dies in battle, they can be revived using a soul chain. Yep. Rock Grove trial. So this will be the new 12 player trial. Normal and the vet version. New sets. There will be a new mount. A unique mount. Unique housing items, titles. and There is no skin, but there is body markings. <clears throat> Note. The hard mode version of this trial is currently disabled to focus testing on the veteran norm. Okay. So I guess they want to get feedback on veteran normal versions because realistically most people don't play hard mode anyway, so they probably don't. It's like less of a priority. New item sets from the trial. Or yeah, this is from the trial, huh? No, all of them. Okay. This is gonna be interesting. Cross the buy. Choosy 2, 3, 4 piece increases your damage done with frost abilities by 6%. Increases your damage done against chilled enemies by 4%. Increases your damage done against enemies afflicted with minor brittle by 2%. Interesting. The frost damage gets a little bit of love. I used to have a frost sork build a while ago. I would definitely have, well, about like three years ago, I guess. It was more of like a. Not the min max build, but just for funsies. This set would definitely have made it. Okay. It's probably not enough to really make it like as good as others, but this is cool. Deadlands Assassin. That's a lot. <laughs> I like two, three, four, five, and another five. Sure. Dealing damage to an enemy with 10 meters of you with a heavy attack causes you to throw a cone of knives dealing physical damage to enemies hit. If an enemy hit has 50% health or less, they also take initial bleed damage over 13 seconds. And scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. Okay, cool. I'm just waiting for the time where there will be like 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5 and another 5 piece. Okay. Developer comment. The physical and bleed damage values are not included in these patch notes as they scale with your weapon and spell damage. Okay, sure. Bog Raider. <clears throat> now these are from Overland, huh? When an enemy you have recently damaged dies, again 10 ultimate and increases your health recovery by 1200 for 10 seconds. 
Okay, that's a lot of health recovery and sure. I wonder if there's a cooldown on this. Could use it for actually grinding. Spam ulti. You don't need the health recovery, but if you like prom bar this. <clears throat> sure it's not the best set, but it would actually like if there is no internal hidden cooldown on the ultimate, you can basically spam shooting star. Please folks, all the sets, like always, will be on Ezohub in the set section and also in the overview page of the Blackwood uh, overview page. And we will also update Ezo sets and skill book, of course. That's this crafted hist whisperer recovery, recovery, recovery. Dealing damage with a lighter medium attack heals you for 300 and it restores 300 stamina magica. Dealing damage with a fully charged heavy attack heals you for. Uh, that's that's uh, not good. I mean, it's a crafted set, so it's not supposed to be super strong, I guess. I guess it's fine, but it's not really something I would get. Heartland Conqueror increases the effectiveness of your weapon trace by 100. This does not affect Ornate or Intricate, okay. Sure. <laughs> Isn't Toruk doing the same? So you could get Toruk and this one, right? <clears throat> and increases cooldown and increases non believing that weapon by 45. So this is 45 and this one would be 100. Web oh traits. Okay. Not an yeah, okay, traits. I see, I see. <laughs> I'm wrong. Torux is enchantments. This here is trait, so you get more critical, for example. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Could be nice if you have like the ulti chain stuff there, but yeah. Shields are not affected by. Okay. Then we have Diamond's Victory. Dealing direct melee damage grants you range supremacy for 5 seconds. Adding 437 on weapon and spell damage to your damage over time and rage attacks. Dealing direct range damage grants you melee supremacy for 5 seconds. Adding 437 weapon and spell damage to your melee attacks. <clears throat> hmm. I don't like like. Why would you wear this if it, like New Moon provides more weapon and spell damage to all your abilities? Anyway, I mean it's a crafted set, so not too shabby, I guess. Trial. So let's see what we have here. Basse is a mania. Mind Slayer, yeah, perfect. It has a spell damage bonus and the other five, the unique five piece. Increases your damage done to non player enemies by up to 15% based on your missing magicka. This is interesting. So essentially, could use. I mean, we have to see how much the percentage scales. Is it from 100 to 0 health base and just getting stronger? But. This sounds strong, we will see. It probably won't be easy to play with this. That's why I usually always prefer easy to set, like easy to use sets. But we will see how this ends up. Sounds really strong. Stone Talkers Oath. Your fully charged heavy attacks place a soul bomb on your target that charges as the target takes damage. After 10 seconds, the bomb explodes. Restoring 5% of the damage received the Stamina Magica up to 2240 2, Stamina Magica to 12 group members within 60 meters. meters. Yeah, okay, I guess. I mean... I'm not sure if, like, Hollow Fang... How much is Hollow Fang? Hollow Hollow Fang is 2500 and it has all the additional effects as well. Hmm. After 10 seconds, the bomb explodes, restoring 5% of the damage received as stamina. So, depending how strong the bomb 
like how much damage the bomb deals yeah could be interesting definitely worth testing out Sulksan's torment when an enemy you recently damaged dies they leave behind a vengeful soul for six seconds you can only create one vengeful soul at a time Touching the soul increases your weapon critical by 2k and your critical damage by 12%. Whoa! Okay, that, that is juicy. I mean, I can already see this is gonna get nerfed. 30 seconds is insane. Now this will also be a fairly difficult set to use. Because it will, like, you gotta... You gotta touch the soul. So this will lead to unnecessary deaths. It's like, yeah, let me just get that soul real quick and the boss does a big fat AoE damage and you're dead because you didn't move. We also don't know, okay, when an enemy you recently damage dies. Yeah, okay, so you need adds. So yeah. There's boss fights with a lot of adds. It could be worth, otherwise tricky. I have to test. It'll be interesting to see. Zax Leal. Zax Leal champion. Tongue breakers, dude. Anyway, when you cast an ultimate ability, you end up to 11 group members within 28 meters of you. Gain major force for 21 seconds, increasing critical damage on by 20%. Oh, that is. That is juicy as hell. 21 seconds major force? Sure. Why not? I mean, you have, yeah, could be good. And you probably can, yeah, you can back bar that even. That is nice. Uh, how much is horn aggressive? Major force is uh, 10 seconds. And this one is 21 seconds, yeah. So you could use this for a while. And then, while it's on cooldown, you could use Horn in between. Yeah, that sounds juicy. Mythics, let's see. One, two, three. Mm, there was five on the preview server. Uh, they probably removed one because it was too strong, but anyway. Gaze of Ziphis. So, I actually like most of the trial sets. I don't really like the crafted stuff. Overland stuff is fine as well. Trial sets sound juicy. I like it. <clears throat> Gaze of Sifis. So this is a mythic. Wait, what? Where, huh? 5k health, 500 health recovery, 10k arm. Reduces your block mitigation to zero. So blocking will be useless while you have this set interesting blocking reduces damage way too much for this to be worth it i feel like unless you plan to not block with your build and dodge roll most attacks then this could be good obviously things like shield spammers and so on it's only a one piece yeah for certain situations this could be decent Harpooners waiting kill, medium legs. Dealing direct damage grants you a stack of Hunter's Focus for one minute, up to 10 stacks. You can only gain one stack of Hunter's Focus per second. Each stack increases your critical chance by 119 and your critical damage by two. Taking direct damage removes one stack. So essentially 1,190 and 20% extra crit damage. That's a lot. But you can't get direct damage. Huh? Otherwise it removes one. But in dungeons and so on, there's not really a lot of direct damage unless you get hit by bosses or mobs directly. So this actually sounds fairly juicy, could be worth it, especially 20% crit damage. There's a lot of interesting sets, I like it. Death Dealer's Fet. Is it Fet or Feti? 
<laughs> anyway, gain a persistent stack of escalating fat every two seconds you are in combat. Up to 10 stacks max. Each stack escalating fat increases your maximum stamina, health and magic by 150. You lose a stack every four seconds you are out of combat. Okay. So that's 1500 stem, health and magic. Hmm. Sounds decent, especially with in PvP there's always characters that can never get out of combat because like the combat bug. Maybe that set is made for them. 1500 is not that much though, but still could be worth it. Shapeshifter's chain reduces the cost of your transformation ultimate abilities by 15% while transform increases your max health, stamina, magic by 1200. Yeah, that sounds rather underwhelming. Like, you usually don't time your ultimate. Like, you don't use the werewolf ulti or the blood cyan or the goliath immediately when it's ready. So most of the time, like, it overshoots. So you have, like, these kind of sets. I don't like them. There is the, what's it called? Werewolf hide? Werewolf. Hide of the werewolf. No, no, wait. Salvation. Sorry. This uh, Salvation. I think this is Salvation. Yeah. It loses the cost of your Werewolf transformation ability by 33%. So, of course, you could stack these two to get super low ulti cost. But I rather equip like powerful sets that pump my damage into heaven while I'm transformed. Because like I said, in most cases you have too like too much ultimate points anyway. Too many points. So yeah. This might be for some people, but not for me. New antiquities, there are new antiquities to find in Blackwood. Yeah, okay. We will also have all of, by the way, the mythics will also be on Ezohub. Like always, we plan to include the leads here with the map where you can find them and so on. It's all here. And on August HQ, the stuff should also be in the location list where we list all of them up. Like always. So, where were we here? Yeah. And same goes for the normal antiquities. I usually list them all up here. If there is like an item, I will put them on Ezohub as well, so you can see how they look. Like this here, for example, there's always images and so on. Yeah. So I'm not sure what happened to the last mythic item because there was five one with harvesting resources. I guess it was deemed to be too strong or it didn't work correctly, so they removed it for a later update. I guess it will it might come with the next DLC. We will see. New collectibles and outfits, I'm not going too much into these. New achievements, 70 new achievements there. Nice. New dice. New motives, furnishings, so there's a lot of things to farm. Now, Endeavors. So this is a complete new system. A lot of people are rumoring around that they implemented this because Microsoft bought Cinemox and they don't want an emphasis too much on loot boxes. Because that stuff is cancer. Endeavors are account-wide limited time activities that reward a new currency, Seals of Endeavors. These can be used to purchase any item from a currently active crown crate. You can even even get uh, like r radiant apex mounts from these. You probably will have to farm a buttload of the new currency to get them, though. It's in the group and activity finder category, yeah, daily and the weekly. And there is a limit you can earn every week, uh, so yeah. I will showcase this as well. Now, okay, on the P, we did that stuff is actually active on the PTS and priced at one seal. This will not be the real price. Yeah. You cannot trade gift or extract items bought from the seal section of the crown store. Sure. 
new monster mask so this was a surprise in this update we have added three new monster masks that are located in the imperial city the masks drop from their respective monsters and from the trophy wall chest in their district let me read that again yeah okay trophy wall chests is probably the shoulder ah okay okay the mask drop from the boss and the trophies interesting the shoulder can be purchased from the telvar merchant zoal the ever wakeful these are like the imperial sewer bosses the very annoying ones in the sewers when you break free you release a wave of watcher energy causing enemies within eight meters of you to become feared for three seconds you also gain 34 weapon and spell damage for each enemy hit up to six seconds this is like the auto free fear that is interesting this is a seven second cooldown they can break fear they get feared and you can even drop an ulti on them animation cancel so this actually sounds interesting however this also brings another problem if you break free they will get feared which will make so they can cc as well so we can't really time the cc properly yeah but there this will definitely be useful for certain builds emulator char armor max health when you take damage while below 50 percent health gain immunity to immobilization snare and crowd control effects for 10 seconds okay this effect can occur once every 40 seconds so it has a brutal long cooldown but so you could basically proc this 10 seconds and then you could drink a cc potion how long are the cc pots these days 10 15 seconds yeah so you this like this sounds like a long time but if you combine this with cc pots you can actually have immunity for a long long time this is good nice glorgolog the destroyer while in combat each second you stand still grants you a stack of flesh fortress up to 10 stacks each stack increases your armor by 380 and your critical resistance by three by 38 each second you move removes a stack exiting combat removes all stacks of flesh fortress using charge and teleport abilities do not remove stacks interesting this doesn't sound that useful because you can't move and moving is very important but yeah it will be interesting to test but yeah i don't don't really like it unless you're like just perma block boy but these really seem to be directed at PvP, obviously. Bankable outfit styles. You can now deposit outfit style paged in your bank. Okay, that is very nice. Thank God. Master request assistance. Your master request will point you towards the correct set crafting station to complete that quest. Cool. New tutorial. Yeah, I, I talked about that before. So you can actually choose where to go afterwards. That's nice. New homes, Pilgrim's Rest, Water's Edge, and Terfang Chapel. Cool. I still don't really have a real home on the NA server. I'll check one. I, I would like the, the, the City of Ash inspired one though. Housing editor update. You can now precision edit furniture items and puff notes from the housing editor's retrieve menu without first having to pick them up. Okay, cool. Combat and gameplay. Major Garab is currently applying to toy mounts. <laughs> well, absolutely hell hilarious. This is not intended, sure. <laughs> Abilities. Yeah, these are mostly like bug fixes, I guess. Misform. Yeah, sure. Most is bug fixes. This is still all Blackwood, I guess. 
elsewhere flames explore man there's so many DLCs this is crazy but this here is a normal okay combat and abilities combat and gameplay reduce player group size limitation from a global maximum of 24 to 12 in all activities rather than only in serial also for overland 2 then i guess eh? and i see i see guess they want to do that to reduce lag i'm not sure anyway fix an issue where a target could occasionally appear to have died twice okay fix 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 the following is going to now deal purely bleed damage rather than physical damage or a mi mix. Blood first, car, yeah, sure. That is a nice bash damage, is now considered a weapon ability since it has a cost. Removed visual and sound effects from each of the following ground effects Graveyard, Lightning Splash, Nova. Yeah, that's good. Wait, the visual effects as well? Ah, uh, okay, the effect is still there, but the tick. Yeah, sure. The following abilities have received significant adjustments to how the server handles their behavior, reducing messages sent between the client and the server, and reducing the total amount of AoE's events occurring. This will largely have little to no effect on their gameplay other than improving a response time to entering or leaving the area. Okay, let's see what they did. Blood Altar. In an instance where Blood Feast and Blood Fun are both available, Blood Feast will now always take priority. Sure. Okay, let's see. The... Some rare cases will reduce the inter interaction with sets that proc off applications of buffs or debuffs, since you will no longer repeatedly apply these effects. Their synergies have also been updated to be far more re reliable to activate when in the area and they will no longer persist for a short duration after each tick. Yeah. Using synergies has been like activating orbs. Such a struggle. I hope that's fixed. Buffs and debuffs, minor lifesteal and magic steal. Both of these effects have received significant backend adjustments to how they operate. Fixing many cases where the caster of the effect would change context. They now are they now are considered to be sourced from the caster of the effect rather than the target. Okay. <laughs> Dragon Knight. I I doubt yeah, there's a lot of class changes, which is fine. Like there's so much new stuff. Like, I would rather play the new content and test out the companions than, like, just rebuild my whole character. For changes that are most of the time useless. Reduce the cost, molten fix. Okay. Reduce the amount of critical chance granted from this passive to, to 4% per grave down from 10. Oh, okay. Interesting, so that's a nerf. Yeah, I mean, it won't really affect the build. Like, I mean, the build itself much, but yeah, that will ultimately reduce the overall damage in execute from necros. Interesting. That's a huge, I mean, that's more like we went from 10% to 4%. That's a big boy fat nerf to that passive. But I guess overall the passive itself compared to other passives was too strong. Night blades. Negate magic, yeah, it takes one set every one set instead of five hundred milliseconds. Yeah. So overall the damage or the healing should be almost the same, it's just ticking less. So, Bolt Escape, Ball of Lightning. This ability's projectile absorption now operates more closely to spell wall or other abilities that deal with absorbing deflecting range attacks. This should fix a few issues where it could absorb attacks it shouldn't have been able to. Inter interesting? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Luminous Charge, this morphs Synergy now restores full resources for the magic and stamina grant rather than half of the off stat granted, sure. Yeah, it makes sense. Eclipse. This morph now scales off your max health or spell damage, which have result in the higher value. Sure. Nova. The synergy from this ultimate the solar disturbance morph supernova now stuns enemies for three seconds up from 2.5. I guess remove the target cap. Oh wow. Yeah, that's a big fat buff. Nice. Solar prison, the synergy from this morph gravity crush now has the proper rate of eight meters instead of ten. Yeah, okay, cool. More small changes. Rune focus. Increase the base duration to 17 up from 14 seconds. Sure. The ability and its morphs no longer grant you an additional 3k armor when staying in them, but instead heal you for 4.5% of your max health every one second when inside. Oh. <laughs> so it's additional healing. Okay, I take that, sure. But that's definitely better than. Uh... <laughs> I guess that's supposed to help tanks. Because it scales of max health now. And previously, like, sure, tanks also benefited from it, but, like, damage dealers and healers also benefited from it. But because damage dealers and healers have lower health values, they will get smaller healing ticks compared to a Templar tank. Sure. 25 seconds instead of 20. Okay. And, like... I, this that's what I don't know. Increase the magic resorber tick to two four two up from two forty. Why even bother change this? Like, are they so obsessed with the numbers? What do the numbers mean, Mason? We don't know anyway. Restoring focus. This more from increase the healing down by twenty five percent. And ranks up in healing down by okay per rank increases stamina restore <laughs> same thing reduce the base cost to nine eight <laughs> like dude why sure whatever warden nothing really worthy yeah okay i guess it's i mean there is obviously imbalances in classes but i'm fine with them not really touching on onto it too much daddy cloak gaining a small buff this ability now deals double damage instead of doubling the tick rate this will result in a nine percent damage increase but will require you to stick to your target more and has less of a chance to proc other effects. Yeah, okay, I see. Twin Blade and Plant. This passive round increases your critical damage done with axes by 6% per axe rather than 4%. Okay, small buff, nice. Brawler, fix an issue where the shield from this morph was missing rank of progression. This will result in a 3.3% strong shield. A brawler is the most broken ability for solo players. That's why all the builds on Alka Stage Q, the solo builds, the two hand uh, like the are two-hander, and they all they all have brawler. The shield you get from this bad boy is just insane. You can't like if you spam brawler, you can't die. Yeah, there's a lot of changes. Necrotic Orb. Okay, let's see. The ability and its morphs now tick once every second rather than every half second. Increase the damage per tick of this ability and its music orb by 16. Oh. But that's a big fat nerf then, huh? Decrease the travel speed of the orb so it's easy to land multiple ticks on low mobility enemies. This will be an overall DPS loss, getting the ability, these abilities closer to the AoE dots, yeah. Okay, I mean, can't really argue against it, the Mystic Orb. 
it was stronger than any of the class dots. Like, it, it was so powerful and is one of the reasons why Magicka builds have so much stronger AoE damage. Some people even started using this thing on stamina builds. Just to showcase you how strong this thing actually is. And this might bring it more in line. So it's a big fat nerf to the ability, but kind of deserved. Alliance War, Cult Drops, increase the damage per tick of this ability and morphs by 36%, even though I'll deal damage equit equitable to a normal dot. Okay, spoiler. Okay, this is interesting. So they want Cult Drop to function similar to the Orb. So Cult Drops might be worth slotting again. We will see. This would be great. Because stem builds used to have always cult drops like 2-3 years ago, but then they nerfed it so hard it just didn't deal enough damage and cost way too much. Champion system. So here's where it gets interesting. And please keep in mind we will adjust the whole champion points section here. So like the, the perks and the calculator will be adjusted as well as the builds on the website, which obviously have all the allocations here. In response to the feedback that there is still too much vertical progression in the system, we have further reduced the maximum number of stages for passive stars, non-slottable, yeah. This will lower the progression cap to 1560 rather than 2100, yeah. So you need less champion points, to get to the max. Thank god I didn't grind too much yet. People that grinded a buttload are probably going to be angry about this. But Saul said themselves that most people have around three to 400 champion points. So it makes sense to lower the cap to a value like this. And the damage change won't be that, like the, the, the power change of the system itself won't be that big. Because it's only the non-slottables they touched. These were less powerful already than like the slottables. So bashing, brutality, defiance, hasty, heroes, Uyghur, sprinter, tireless, yeah, so. Like tireless... No, Heroes Vigor is the health stuff. Then... Yeah, okay, sure. Eldritch is like Magicka. Which one was the stamina one? A uh, tireless discipline, I was stamina one. Cut in half. They also added six new stars. In this constellation, four of which are in the new and final sub-constellation. Master Creation, yeah. So the in the warfare there's currently two substars, one is here and the other one is here. And there will be a third one which I think is located here. So this one is for damage dealers, this one is for tanks, and this one will be for healers. Oh so overflow. Overhealing yourself or an ally grants them health, magic, and standard recovery. Okay. From the brink, healing yourself or a target under 25% health grants them a damage shield that absorbs 2.2k damage. 30 second cooldown, damn. Hope infusion, healing yourself or an ally under health grants them minor heroism. Yeah, these are kind of tough because like in ESO you overheal a lot. So most people never drop below 50. And if they drop below 50... They're usually dead instantly. <laughs> Masters at Arms. Oh, increases your damage done with direct damage attacks by 2%. Interesting. When you remove a negative effect from yourself or an ally, you heal them and allies within an 8 meter radius. Sure. Okay, yeah, cool. Now let's see. Set changes. Yeah, sure. 
Oh yeah, so the item sets that proc events that deal damage or heal now scale similarly to abilities based on a specific stat. That's the thing we mentioned in our news article here. The bottom proc set scaling changes. So you can't just get free damage, so let's see. Damage focused proc based events will scale with the higher of your weapon or spell damage. So to gain the original value of many sets, you need 5,500 weapon and spell damage. This is easy to do in PvE, but might be a little bit harder to do in PvP. The nerf is intended for PvP because proc sets vastly overperform there. Now, if you go overboard on this, the proc sets will deal more damage. And given that most builds have fairly high, let me actually check real quick. One of the PVP builds. Fully buffed, I have like 6.4K, yeah on the North DK. So we will see. I guess if it's still not enough, they will just increase the value here. But this is overall good. Same for healing focused and then yeah, you need like 39k tanking 39k 38k health or resistance. Yeah. Ability altering weapons. The, the following sets are scale of your weapon and spell damage. Okay, sure. Crafted, yeah, so these are just the things that change. Yeah, that's a lot of sets. I'm sure they forgot some of them. <laughs> but it's a good change overall. Oh, and there is a few nerfs or changes. Amberplasm got the slight nerf. Blood Drinker got the slight nerf. Bone Pirate, oh, down to 133, sure. Elemental Catalyst increased the set's critical damage taken to 5% per sec up from the element. Isn't that the Elemental Catalyst? Hmm. This set is already strong and they actually buffed it? Sure. Oh, hollow fung. Yeah, that was in for a nerf. Reduce the mag magic restore to one thousand seven hundred. Yeah, that's that's definitely justified. The the one of the main reasons why Magicka has such an easy time to sustain is because hollow fung is just over the board. Like two point five k times twelve in a trial. It's just so much max Magicka from one tick. On top of that, it gives some, it gives other bonuses as well. So yeah, maybe two K would have been enough, but sure, still good. Maybe they also wanted to like promote the other new set, which gives resources, so they dropped this slightly. Monster mask. They also changed some of the value, uh, like the the proc conditions. I actually, it's going to be interesting to see how much they will deal damage in PvE because most people have way higher. I actually, let's go check this out real quick. Maybe the Stem Necro. Well, I uh, should have. Huh? 6.8k damage, like 7k. Fully buffed. And you need like five, how much was it? 5.5k? Yeah, it's gonna deal more. Interesting, interesting. Marcelog now procs off your melee heavy attack, sure. Cooldown and cruise reduce the bonus scaling perf. Oh, that's a big, but remove the cap of 50. Huh, interesting. That's a big nerf, but it can't be kept anymore, but still. Damn. 
longer cooldown and the uh, the nerf. That's crazy. Goodbye, I guess. I mean, most people use the Vatishram dual wield daggers anyway. Executioner, I think they're called Executioner the Blade. Just deals so much damage and gives you sustain back. Mythics increase the magic granted from this set to 1600 up from sure. Malakov, this set now increases your damage done by 16% but reduces your critical damage done by 50%. Rather than increasing your damage done by 25 and making you unable to do critical damage. Huh, sure. Hail order? Oh, whoa, whoa, let's see. Increases the amount of healing down from this set to 20. Wait, they buffed it? This set now loses 4% of its value per group member you're with. This means if you're alone, it will stay at 20, but reduce to 8% if you're if you in a group with 3 or a players and 0% when with 5 or more. So they want to make this set useless in trials, is what they're saying. Remove the heal. Mother of God. This is actually even better for solo builds. Like, I have this on all my solo builds. Ring of the Pale Order is just so juicy if you're playing solo. Go get it if you don't have it already. <clears throat> yeah, so the same stuff. Yeah. Sure. It's gonna be interesting to do how how that pans out with the proc scaling. I guess if people still deal way too much damage with them, they will adjust the values of the procs. It will just increase like instead of five on five k, you might need like eight k to reach the the same value as before. Overall, I do like these patch notes. They Quite often the patch notes make me depressed, but this year was actually okay. I'm really looking forward to all the new stuff. Make sure to check out ezo-hub.com. The link is in the description below as well. I will also link to the overview page. We will add all the sets, the housing items, the leads to this page. <clears throat> kind of like overview page. And there's plenty of other stuff like champion points, the companion. A lot of guides are on ezo-hub and alcashq.com as well. You can also check out the Dwemer Automaton, which is a Discord bot. It has a lot of comments for you ready to go. I do have a Twitter, Facebook. We have a Discord community server, Instagram. Here, a YouTube channel. Make sure not forget to subscribe. I do have a secondary YouTube channel where I upload past live streams and the Twitch itself. I usually stream on the weekend, so if you have questions, it's best to catch me there. Other than that, yeah, that's it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this. I will be doing videos over the next few weeks about all, like about all of the new stuff. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.